Ah yes, now hello guys, this is a really quick video on setting your gains with your subwoofers connected versus disconnected. Now there's many different opinions regarding this, but my advice on the internet and forums will always be always set your gains with your subwoofers connected and my reasons for that are because without your subwoofers connected there is no load on the amplifier therefore your rail voltages are at the absolute maximum that they ever be as soon as you connect your subwoofers there is voltage drop across the output rails across the power supply section of the amplifier across your power wire and across your batteries and when that happens your then once clean set gain point with no subwoofers connected is now capped off by the reduction in rail voltage inside the amplifier so it's no longer clean so you have to set your gains with your subwoofers connected and ideally at enclosure tuning frequency because that is when your impedance rises at the least and when your voltage drop is at the most so to demonstrate this we have on the bench a just a pioneer gmd 209601 uh, which is an amp i just finished repairing so i thought it was a good idea just i might as well use this as a quick bench test anyway just test it out um and we're going to show the difference between the sine wave on the scope uh, uh, with no subs connected and then with the subwoofers connected up you'll see the difference between clean and then clipped signal with the subs disconnected and connected so um, for a load i actually have um uh, four uh, four ohm dummy loads here which uh, then in parallel equate to a one ohm load so we're going to be loading the amplifier with a one ohm static load and for a power supply we have um, some pretty big supply we have uh, 375 amps worth of continuous power supply um, current supply which is more than enough for this quick test and we have a 40 hertz sine wave coming in on the RCAs so without further ado let's power the supplies up and let's show you first of all this the low disconnected where the clipping point Point is um, at 12 volts here so let's go ahead and start the tone um, we're just gonna go ahead and take our scope probe and see where this clips at with no speakers connected no subwoofer or load connected so looks like our maximum clean um, sine wave there is 38.1 volts RMS of clean sine wave so that is with no speakers connected whatsoever and that is a nice clean sine wave so um in terms of many people who are setting their gains like this that would be the way they would leave it and they would then go ahead and connect their subwoofers up to the amplifier and start playing away however let's see what happens when we connect our subwoofers to the amplifier so i'm going to go ahead here and just attach my um my dummy loads to the amplifier so we have multiple dummy loads here. Multiple dummy loads in parallel to equivalent, equivalent to a one ohm load. Let's just shove those in there and tighten these up with the Allen key. So without touching the gain position on the amplifier at all, I'm just gonna go ahead and start the tone once more with the load connected and you'll see the difference in the sine wave. Uh oh, look at that. Now we only have 35.5 volts RMS of, cle or, well, of clipped sine wave now from this amplifier. So now that the amplifier is loaded, the rail voltages have shrunk down from their maximum, which was around about 38 volts RMS worth of sine wave on the rails. And now we only have 35.5 and that is a clipped sine wave. So I'm gonna just go ahead and disconnect the uh, loads again. Just gonna loosen these Allen key grub screws so that the loads are now disconnected from the amplifier. And let's do that again and it'll be clean. There we go. Now I'm just going to go ahead, while, whilst, the, uh, whilst the tone is playing, I'm going to go ahead and plug the load into the amplifier whilst the tone is playing, so you can see it drop off on the screen. I've got to get this, do this carefully here. So that's, that's uh, two of the wires in. That's three. There we go. So you can see there, as soon as I touch the wire on the amplifier, there's a big spark. For, I don't know if you, you can't see that here, but there's a big spark from the amplifier uh, speaker terminals as I touch the wire. 
and then we have the clipped wave there as a result of connecting the load to the amplifier. So, I mean, I don't know if that's enough proof for you, any of you guys that's watching that there, but um, this gets even more intense the bigger the amplifier you do. So, this is only a little 1200 watt amplifier. If you, if you were to go for a 5k or a 7 or 8 or 10k amplifier, the voltage drop across the rails gets infinitely bigger the bigger the amplifier you go for and so the difference between unclipped sine wave amplitude and sorry yeah uh, unloaded sine wave amplitude and loaded sine wave amplitude becomes even more drastic so if you were to set up your 8 or 10k amplifier with no subwoofers connected whatsoever you would see a huge great big sine wave on the scope nice big high voltage yeah awesome nice and clean you connect your subs up and you play the exact same tone the exact same settings and everything like that and it is heavily heavily clipped due to voltage drop across the output rails the power supply and the amplifier your cable and your batteries and alternator so guys thanks for watching if you have any questions or comments feel free to shoot them down on the comment section of youtube or shoot me a message on my bear vids facebook page just go to bear vids and type in sorry go to facebook and type in bear vids and it'll come straight up so till next time take it easy